some of it's going to be really difficult. We are going to have to not do things that we traditionally have done. I am Joanne Manning. I lead the global resources business now in Arab. I've always led businesses that are future facing and led them in a future facing way. As an example, when I looked to developing a resource and waste business in Australia, I very much said, well, we will do it only if we put waste as a resource at the center of what we do. And therefore we refuse to do any new landfill development because that's managing waste as a waste rather than managing it as a resource. Stop thinking about it as waste. It's a resource and therefore it's something to be valued. It's something to be protected. It's something to be cherished. We need to transform our economy from being linear, from this take, make, use and dispose to being circular, where we value things, we keep everything in circulation at its highest value. We actually look to design it out in the first place. We actually say to ourselves, well, can we refuse it? What can we do? Can we just do more with what we have? And then at the same time, looking to regenerate our natural systems and, and increasing our natural capital, which we now recognize is fundamental to achieving sustainable development. A lot of people say, well, our system isn't broken because the linear economy has been really effective and it has delivered economic prosperity and, and actually human well-being like no other century and like no other economy has. But it is broken because it's come at a huge cost to our environment and our planet. So we only have a finite planet. We have ever increasing demand on this ever decreasing pool of finite resources that we have. It has to change. Managing waste as a resource is actually a, a, a fundamental part of sustainable development. My form of leadership is very much inclusive leadership or even servitude leadership to provide that direction and stewardship that people can get behind and people can understand. To lead in this space and to advocate for it is something I feel very privileged about. It's about being me, about being authentic. I believe that being true to what I believe in, true to my family, true to my communities, true to the people that I work with is fundamental to who I am. One of the key values for Arab is to have sustainable development at the heart of everything that we do. And that's true to me as well, and making sure that I walk the talk at all times in terms of how I am behaving and how I conduct myself. I'm a big believer in strong communications and listening holistically to different opinions. I feel stretched and outside my comfort zone at all times. Even most recently I've been appointed to the board. I think being a woman as well, we all straight away have the imposter syndrome going, why me? Why am I there? But realizing that I do have a really strong voice, advocating for those priorities and challenging, having that ability to stand up for what I believe in and actually be being brave. And some of it's really hard. Some of it's going to be really difficult. We are going to have to not do things that we traditionally have done. Well, my first one was my original leader who I had in Dublin, a woman called Neva Sullivan, who was just the most incredible woman. And when I joined Arup and I started working with Neve, she pushed us and she really challenged what we could do, but very much gave us that belief. I mean, I've been very fortunate always to work with really, really strong people within Arup. And I've also been very fortunate to have great clients that always led to a really great diversity of people to work with. And yeah, that's all shaped who I am. I've worked through the UK, through Ireland, and now in Australia. So again, being exposed to lots of different cultures, different types of people and lots of different environments. You have to just strive to anything as possible. Be inquisitive, take time to research and learn what it is you're trying to change. Don't just go, oh, I've got a barrier, that's it. I can't go any further. Stop, contemplate, there's always a workaround. Get sponsors, get allies. If you feel you're ever alone, you're not alone and you just need to find your crew and find out who else is battling the same things that you are. The course was just fantastic. I think the quality of the people that we were exposed to and the content was absolutely fantastic. But I think more than anything else, it gave me confidence. It made me realize that 
I'm not just a stalwart doing this alone. There's actually all these other people who are already doing it and already have had huge impact and huge influence. There was a lot of opportunity to learn on how to execute, which I thought was a critical part of the course. One of the things I obviously learned actually was really understanding these four key stakeholder groups, you know, the community from academia, from industry and from government, and then understanding you know, what are those different perspectives and how does that influence my positioning and my decision-making. What the course gave me in many ways was a pathway to achieve my ambition.